right, we got some people. So, John, excited to talk to you. What a year you've had, right? It's been wild. It's been yeah. fun. So you launched la last March. Yes, March of 2021. You've had a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Lefts and rights and centers, yep. <laughs> so kind of walk us through, I mean, how does a vet start a, a blockchain company? Like, how does that happen? Walk us kind of through. Well, it's about uh, vision and realizing and capitalizing on what the technology can actually do. Um, and, you know, I was very much a nerd for the U.S. military. Um, and I'd been introduced to blockchain through, uh, through more of the, the counterterrorism exploitation side of things uh, and looking into the technology. And while looking into the technology in order to do my job, um, I had to become an expert on what it was, um, or at least as much of an expert as you can be with, with something that evolves rapidly at a very rapid pace. You know, the joke is uh, one week in crypto is one quarter in corporate America. So um, it's been a very fast paced environment uh, but the technology is barely tapped at this current point in time, and it is going to continue to evolve, and it's, it's a pleasure to be part of that journey. Yeah, so when I was doing my research, you know, I, I used to think you were a meme coin, coin, but, you know, I, I've read some interviews with you. You say, you know, you're a blockchain company. How do, how do you make sure you, people don't get that confused? Because there's a lot of, you're kind of in the meme mix. Yeah, so it's about communication and awareness, and so uh, we rely heavily on our uh, Safe Moon Army uh, to pass the me message along about what we're doing, what our vision is, what products that we have coming out. Um, you know, we have our, our decentralized exchange or DEX uh, that's rather robust, and it's actually getting an upgrade here on the 22nd. We'll be a, be a cross-chain swap uh, right now from the Binance Smart Chain to Ethereum and, and back and then adding more chain support as we go on. Um, and then we're heavily into kind of like the infrastructure development side of things and tying in what some people would think is uh, unrelated, uh, but tying it into blockchain. And what blockchain allows us to do with those things, specifically with wind turbines, is remove friction points where we can actually get a cost savings that we can pass on to our, our users, onto the, the consumers, rather than passing it on to our profits. Um, and so we talk heavily about, you know, return on impact. And that return on impact, the impact is uh, Safe Moon's kind of north star. It's like, how much impact are we having in people's lives? Were we able to raise the standard of living, even by a little bit? And that's how we measure success. Yeah. So, you know, as a person for, at CNBC, I get pitched a token, a blockchain company, literally every day of my life. Um, I think there's about 9,000 coins out there right now. or Something like that. So how, why is Safe Moon, what's, what makes Safe Moon so different and, you know, you know, the better than the rest? Um, so I don't really compare us to others. Um, you know, we're playing an infinite game. Uh, so I compare Safe Moon, what it is now, to what Safe Moon can be 10 years from now. And that's that's kind of our, our competition, is our 10-year version of ourselves. So um, what makes us different is, first off, we're a tech company, first and foremost. Um, and what separates us in that arena is we we're, we focus on human-based innovations. Uh, it's that return on impact. It's the impact strategy. Um, so, and then on top of that, uh, there's not a whole lot of crypto projects that you actually get to sit down and talk with the CEO or the founder. It's very rare that that, that actually occurs. But what you're seeing is after SafeMoon kind of made a little bit more, I would say, mainstream, so to speak, to, to be doxxed, you're starting to see a trend with a lot of other projects doing that. So... I don't know. We're we're paving the way in a lot of different uh, different areas, um, and you know we focus on the technology versus the actual uh, cryptocurrency side. Yeah, you're right about that. A lot of a lot of them are in hiding for some. I mean, why do you think that is? Like, um, or they don't. I, I think that was just uh, remnants of uh, what crypto culture was at the very beginning. Um, with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin. Um, yeah. But I, th I think you're starting to see as more mainstream, as more uh, crypto curious and the mainstream get more involved with it, I think you'll start to see it kind of transition into uh, something as common as uh, video games because video games weren't as popular as they are now. You know, it started off with more of a being a niche thing and now it's very mainstream. Yeah. So you launched in March of last year. Yes. Um, I think you have about uh, 2.8 million users. Or uh, around that. So we have uh, 1.3 million Twitter followers, 300-something thousand on Reddit, um, over 100,000 on Discord. And then we have uh, over a million users on, our, on the SafeMoon wallet. Um, and we actually got to that number in, in less than four months. Yeah, you have the, the slogan, Safely to the Moon, the, the SafeMoon Army. I know that there's, they're, a, they're a force. Um, but how did you do that? 
did the strategy behind really building so quickly? Um, so it wasn't necessarily about building quickly. It was about turning hype into trust. And you do that by actually engaging with your community. A lot of companies uh, say they engage with their community, but what they're not involving them in the in the process. So for us, SafeMoon, we actually involve our community in the development process from a uh, basically receiving feedback. So uh, the cross-chain swap, um, a lot of other companies, they'd have to hold peer review, or not peer review, um, uh, like survey groups or something, and uh, figure out if that's what their users actually want. For us, I just go directly into Discord, Twitter, and I'm like, hey, do you want us to cross the chains? I get a resounding yes, great, that's the next feature we implement. So. Uh, having that direct feedback, both positive and negative, allows SafeMoon to evolve and adapt a lot quicker than other, other companies because we involve them with that process. Yeah. Tell me, what is a typical SafeMoon army? Um, what, what, what's that person like? Male, uh, female, 25? Uh, so we're really fortunate to have a lot of diversity at SafeMoon, um, which allows us to, to pull from a lot of different schools of thought. Um, but uh, the best way to put it, in our moderation team, in our volunteer team, we have you know, college students all the way to retired board certified physicians. Really? Yeah. So that's, it's, I, I'm like shocked by that. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a very wide, and because we don't collect user data, um, we don't necessarily have the exact metrics that uh, another company that does collect data uh, would have. Um, so for us, you know, I, I kind of look at the, the safe and army and because I'm part of the community as well, um, I can communicate with them and I actually learn uh, their backgrounds, like you get to learn people's uh, handles, or their uh, Discord handles, or their Twitter handles, and you talk to them all the time, and then you meet them in person, and everyone's different, and so it, we're very fortunate to have a very diverse community. Yeah, so what I'm learning from the NFT community and crypto, it's it's all about the community. That's why people invest, because they want to be part of this community. Is that what you're, you're finding that um, that's what people are drawn to? Uh, yes, our community is is an amazing group of people. Um, of course, there's, you're always going to have bad actors wherever you're at, but for the majority part, the community is absolutely fantastic uh, to the point where um, they actually help each other out with technical support. So if somebody has an error or they can't calculate something, uh, they actually just hop on a Discord, hop on a Twitter, and they get flooded with answers to, uh, to their problem and flooded with solutions to, to help them with whatever they're, they're trying to solve. Yeah, and I also know you've tapped into celebrity endorsements. I, I know Shaq told me a couple of weeks ago, you know, he gets offers, pay him a, you know, a million in crypto if he tweets out something. It's like the big thing with every celebrity is being asked. What, what, what's your thoughts around celebrity endorsements and did you see a bump um, by using them? So we don't use celebrity endorsements just like I don't talk to whales. I don't really care about influencers in, in that regard. You know, every, if you're part of the Safe Moon Army, you're part of the Safe Moon Army. Whether you have, um, you know, a very large holding or whether you have a smaller holding, whether you're an influencer, whether you're not. And what you see is you actually get an organic growth of an entire community. So for us, while it was, we were very fortunate to have, you know, uh, there was a, uh, Diplo did a concert um, where he actually had the Safe Moon in the background. I've never talked to Diplo. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so you've never paid a celebrity and some a celebrity to endorse the product. In what regards? So uh, like a tweet, because I've seen some tweets um, about you know celebrity tweeting about they're investing. You should you know kind of. Like are, are you talking it. about Dave Portnoy? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So Dave Portnoy, I've actually never had a conversation with. Now I do appreciate his taste in pizza, and I do use his reviews all the time. Yeah. Um, however, I I'm not sure has he actually done something with pineapple on pizza. Cause I like to have that. I like to have that conversation. Yeah. Only cheese. Yeah. He, okay. One bite, All right. Oh, one bite only cheese. Yep. So uh, no. So I've never actually had a conversation with Dave Portnoy regarding that. I mean, that video was pretty funny. I will admit it was pretty yeah. funny. Um, but no, I haven't had a conversation with Dave Portnoy. Yeah. So what what has been your strategy to grow the community? Is so, it social media? Is it it's communication? Actually, so it's direct engagement with our audience. And so I'm in Discord all the time. Uh, talking with them and whether or not it's specifically safe moon related or whether it's my absolute disdain for pineapple on pizza um, You know, I, I engage with them and I, I talk to them and the other thing uh, with growing a, uh, with growing a community is it's about being able to to use a message or to craft a message that will actually resonate with different people from different backgrounds because as I said before, we've got, in our, just in our moderation team, we have college students all the way to retired board certified physi physicians, and our messaging needs to resonate with, with both, both groups, which 
it, when it comes to crypto, uh, the views depending on age also, it's very different. Yeah, so you know, we talk about the the highs, but you know, with the lows, you know, there is some controversy around Safe Moon with the pump and dump lawsuit with you know people people being mixed up in that uh, the Bitmark hack. You know, Safe Moon users, like, what do you what do you say to that? I mean, I know you, you guys are growing. There's a lot that happens with the new company, but what do you say to people who? Have so I won't I won't comment on ongoing cases. So yeah. let's just set that barrier right then and there. Okay. Um, in regards to the Bitmark hack, you know, there's there's because it's a, this is an emerging market, there's a lot of security features that need to be upgraded across the board. Um, and Bitmart was a victim in this too. You know, I, I really do applaud them for coming up with a, a good solution that works for them to protect one. So one thing that people don't realize is if Bitmart went out of business, then everyone would have lost their tokens. But the fact that they were able to uh, come up with a solution that was sustainable for them so they could stay in business and make sure to do right by the SafeMoon Army, and not just the SafeMoon Army, but the other crypto communities. I really applaud them for that. And you know, I talked to uh, uh, to Chad. He's one of their listing coordinators, um, as well as their executive team uh, throughout that entire process. And you know, that the the error was on Bitmart's part. However, because we have a, a commitment to our community, you know, we we work with them. We try to help them find solutions to the problem throughout the entire process. Yeah. And the community was actually very beneficial and very helpful in that as well. Um, you know, our community knew about this rapidly, and they were able to uh, to really get the word out regarding what was going on. So I really applaud them for that. Yeah. So I want to. How do you, when when you're building a company, how do you hide? Like, how do you handle like things like that? You know, I mean, obviously we talked about highs and lows, and that happens with every company. Like, what have you learned as your journey? Because you know, you're you're a new CEO. Um, like, what have you learned how to how to handle things like that, and what what works best? Um, being consistent um, and keeping a level head. There's always going to be chaos, and it's finding the best route through the chaos. Um, and just, uh, I, I hate to break it. So, like in the military, they do resiliency courses, and I remember sitting down, like listening to the PowerPoint, not enjoying it. However, now that I'm out, and I actually pull from that knowledge, and it does pay me a little bit because I used to complain about having to do that sit through those PowerPoints and just like, ah, oh, resiliency course, but I'm, I'm having to use resiliency just to make it through this PowerPoint presentation. But there's a lot of lessons learned that you can take from that, which is like, you know, hunt the good stuff, uh, keep keep an eye on your North Star and what, what the actual vision is. And the only way through a storm is through it. So it's being able to pivot and adapt to the situation at hand, and, and it changes every day. So what's easier, um, Army or stress? Uh, it's stressful in different ways. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's just different. Yeah. So, so what? What's your plan? What's your What's your focus on right now? Like for Safe Moon and its future. Yeah. So right now we have a variety of products that we're working on and uh, getting out to release. So the w the one closest on the horizon that we've discussed is the cross chain swap. We have Safe Moon Connect, which is uh, the hub and allows. And in Safe Moon Connect, we have our point of sale system, which will make it a lot easier for um, you know business to business partners to actually integrate uh, crypto as a payment option for them. Um, so we have that coming out. Uh, blockchain, of course, you know, we've, uh, for me, it's not for me, for our company, you know, we, the view is, and the, in all reality, it's 90% prep work, 10% actual, actual coding. Uh, but yes, we have coded about, I think two blockchains, I got to check with the dev team, but we had two blockchains that we actually coded out and built out just to t test some theories around something that we're trying to do with our entire ecosystem. And then it's also the, the impact side. So the, the infrastructure that we're, we're putting in place and developing that incorporates, uh, renewable energies with telecommunications so you can actually provide clean energy, access to opportunity, and access to education. Yeah. What do you think about Biden's new executive order? Um, you know, I, with legislators, you know, I really, I'm really happy to see that they are uh, seeking more knowledge and seeking to understand what is going on with cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency isn't going anywhere. And it's really good to see when legislators actually seek to understand versus legislate. It's, it's like a, you don't want a legislator from the 10th century trying to write traffic laws. You want someone who's well-educated, who understands it, or at least has enough of an understanding to where they can actually write comprehensive legislation around it. Yeah. So Mark Cuban had actually had a good point yesterday. He says mainstream America, you know, they're not into crypto because it needs to solve a problem. W what, what do you think the problem is that um, crypto can solve? Uh, so a lot actually um, and it's not just crypto it's about the blockchain technology the software aspect of it you know uh, blockchain is just uh, an immutable ledger 
and and it's completely transparent. So when you're talking about a uh, prime example would be tax collection. You know, there's no question of where your taxes are going because you can actually see it on the blockchain. Um, uh, data collection and storage, um, you can actually see who is using that data at what time. Um, and then uh, stores of value. You know, in some countries, you know, access to banking is very, very limited. Um, but having, a, a, but most people around the globe actually have a smartphone. So if you have a smartphone, you can actually hold your store of value, your wealth, your money, your opportunity on your phone and then be able to transact globally. Yeah. So your, your whole thing is about this 10% ten per, ten fee. I want you kind of to talk about it a little bit. So because you, you don't, you, your whole thing I saw on your LinkedIn, you know, you're not looking to trade, you hold and you're, you, you're going to only spend your safe moon. Um, but can you actually spend it right now? So w that's where the point of sale system comes in. Um, so with, with the version two of the smart contract, uh, one of the, the problems that we had to solve is how do you differentiate between transactions on the Binance smart chain? Uh, cause there's a limitation there cause it can't really delineate between the two. Um, so we were able to find a solution to that. And uh, so when you want to send wallet to wallet, you know, it's, it's kind of a compromise where it's a 2% uh, fee on that transfer, which then results in reflections and burns and the deflationary uh, aspect. And then when it, on the buys and sells, there's a, uh, there's a 10%. So the 2% would come into play with the spending because um, it's a store of value at the end of the day. And being able to spend your crypto is, for me personally, that's what I want to do. Like I want to actually be able to spend my, my safe moon, my Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever else on goods and services because for me it's a, it's more of a digital store of value but everyone has a different opinion on what crypto is yeah so you know you brought up other cri uh, currencies i mean i think a lot of people they want to jump in the game but there's just so much noise um you know you read oh mark cuban's doing this or so and so's doing this or this went up and you want to get on, you everybody wants to make money that's the bottom line um part most most people i spoke yes i speak to so what is your advice for people who who want to get invested, but you know, obviously I don't give financial advice, but what is your advice? On okay. You don't give it financial, but I mean, is it like start small? Is it to di diversify? Is there anything? So I don't give financial advice. Okay. Got it. No, no worries. Um, but w I mean, would you, are you, are you, are you in invested in other cryptocurrencies? I don't talk about my personal holdings and I don't give financial advice. Okay. There you go. Um, so, I mean, so what, What's your your plan for ten years from now? What's Safe Moon going to look like? That's an excellent question. That because Safe Moon's ever evolving, um, and we're competing with this, uh, this ethereal version of ourselves in ten years. But uh, what I see is we'll have all the infrastructure in place. We'll have an ever growing ecosystem. But also, we're not going to lock ourselves in to that specific vision because this is emerging tech, and it changes rapidly. And you know, with Safe Moon, the our metric of success is: are we continuing to evolve? Not only with within the company, but also within the market? Are we being competitive? Are we providing value to our users? And are we actually getting that return on impact? Yeah, so how are you, t talk to me about your staff. I know you have a small staff, but you have a large... So define staff. So when you're, when you're talking about uh, like corporations across the globe, depending on the jurisdiction you're working in, um, whether they're an employee or not is a whole separate ballgame. So if we're gonna use the traditional W-2 employees here in the United States, I believe it's about 10 to 15 plus in the United States specifically. But when you talk about international contractors, which is the US term, but paid staff by SafeMoon, I think we're at, uh, as of right now, after the restructuring, uh, Josh, what? 65? Uh, 65 paid. Um, and then we also do bring in outside specialized help when needed. So that, that number does fluctuate, just like with any company. Um, but one of the things I wanted to target was actually having a 24-hour development cycle. And I believe we're at 19, 20 hours right now in terms of how much work we can actually do in terms of working hours. And so that was, you know, with the, the benefit of, you know, everyone going to remote work, um, one of the benefits is, you know, people being able to work from home means that we can access talent across the globe. Uh, and because SafeMoon is, is a, a global community, um, we want to make sure that we're actually able to uh, cater to each one of those communities because time zones cause, it's, it's a logistical issue, you know, and so actually having representation across the globe and having people online as, you know, as many hours in the day as possible has been super beneficial to us where we can actually maximize all 24 hours in the day. Yeah, you, term, you told me earlier you have volunteers or people who Part are of the just community. Yeah. yes who are just so passionate about you like how, how did that how did that come about? about so they're very passionate about safe moon and, and yeah. safe moon's mission and vision um so 
you know, they're just, they volunteer. They're like, hey, I've got time. And we have uh, Zoom in here today. Um, but. Oh, he's a volunteer? Uh, she's a volunteer. Oh, really? So why, why yeah. do you volunteer? You, why do you volunteer your time? May I ask? Yeah. What, what drew you to it? Wow. All right. There you go. <laughs> so it's about the vision and what Safe Means doing, and it's also about the, the products and services that we're able to value and uh, being able to provide value to our users. Yeah. So we talked about this year. What has this year been like for you? Has it been 24-7? Have you had a vacation? Are you working around the clock? Like I'm always on the clock. So uh, my phone blows up all the time. I answer messages. And then, you know, if I've got – sometimes, you know, you get some downtime, but there's still uh, – Still a lot of work to be done. So you just try to find, you know, those bits and, oh. Yeah. Hello, Siri. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't want to say that out loud. People, everyone's phones will go off. Um, no, so it's about, uh, you know, finding those, like, two hours in the day that just to take a breather to relax. Uh, but, no, it's been, it's been pretty much nonstop uh, since, since it took off. So. Yeah, what's, b what's been the biggest thing, what's been your biggest stress? What keeps you up at night? Uh not turning my phone on silent really there like even with building a company there hasn't been something you learn that um, there's a lot of lessons learned but i don't let fear uh go into my decision making process that's one thing i did learn from my military services you know you can get paralyzed by fear and so i mean do i feel fear yes do i let it seep into my decision making process no so for me um it's actually just the the work-life balance is what i struggle the most with yeah but I, it doesn't actually exist as an entrepreneur. You know, you don't actually have a necessarily work-life balance. You know, you just, it's, again, it's those two hours of the day that you can actually take to yourself, maybe take a nap, um, you know, go for a run, work out, or do something to, to better yourself. Yeah. What does your family think about what you're building? Because I know y your parents are CIA, former CIA agents. Is that what I, did I read that correctly? Uh, yeah. Um, they like it. They enjoy yeah. it. Um, but I also, I don't talk about my family. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, listen. I mean, every th at least I'm getting you somewhere. Um, so, what, what what advice do you have for someone who's interested in launching a startup? Uh, hold on for dear life. <laughs> Hodl. Uh, you know that doesn't just apply to, to cryptocurrency. That's just life in general, and especially in the entrepreneur world. Hodl. Hold on for dear life. And it's not like a like it's it's uh, it's a bad thing. It's no, it's a crazy ride, and you need to be ready to adapt to the to the situation. So yeah, what's the biggest thing you think you've learned? Uh, I would say it's communication um, and being able to deliver a message to a wide, diverse audience. Yeah, and where do you where do where do you see yourself? Like, where what would be your dream? Like, is there someone you idolize in this community or a CEO that you idolize that you try to emulate? Uh, probably Kevin O'Leary is one of them. Um, oh, he wow. has a okay. similar background in the way he grew up. You know, State Department grew up overseas and then came back to the United States. So. Uh, he's someone I do I do look at and I do watch some of his stuff. Um, and where where would I be and where do I want to be? Uh, sleeping, you know, that would that would be very nice to get some more of that. But uh, no, I'm I'm very excited about what we're doing at Safe Moon. I'm very excited about being able to to continue to work on the vision. And I'm really excited about what we're going to be delivering this year. Yeah, actually, we just spoke to Kevin O'Leary. He he invests twenty percent of his um, net worth or his portfolio into cryptocurrencies. Um, so I really like his view on how he he treats. He, shares the same view of that, that cryptocurrency and blockchain is software. Um, so I do really respect that view, and it sounds like he ha does have a, a deeper understanding than a, a lot of people um, from other corporations. Yeah. What do you think people get wrong about Safe Moon that you often see out there in the media? Because there's a lot. I mean, like, you know, people like it, people don't like it, people, you know, criticize it, and, you know, with just like with anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's what happens. So uh, well, what, do you, what do you think? Probably the meme coin thing. Um, and that, that's about it. Like, I don't tend to pay attention to the noise um, as it's distracting and it de kind of detracts away from the vision. If I'm spending the energy reading everything online, you know, I do keep uh, apprised of what's going on online. But if I spend all my day on, uh, on, on media and just reading all the articles that were written about us, I'm not engaging with our community. I'm not uh, doing my job as a CEO. Um, so for me, it's, I don't tend to focus on the noise. I'll be aware of it. I can hear it, it is noise, but it's focusing on the mission, it's focusing on a North Star, which is that uh, return on impact. Yeah, what do you think people, um, what have you learned about yourself as a CEO? 
Like, are you a good boss? Are you a tough boss? Are you? Um, I think I'm a good boss. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not really good at talking about myself. So <laughs> you're not good at talking about yourself. <laughs> no, it's it's. I think I'm a good boss. Um, you know, I I tend to uh, allow people to grow for me. It's it's definitely about the people within the company and uh, building a good culture and making sure that we have the right team members uh, to the point where like the restructuring was v very very crucial. You know, bringing on some some stellar people uh, to include uh, Josh, the, our, our VP of operations, who's actually been part of the company since since the restructure started, um, and as well as. Yeah. There you go. Being a good listener is important. So I always ask CEOs, where do, where do you think your drive comes from? I mean, obviously, you got to have an intense drive to do what you do every day and to just, you know, put up with it all. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it's the, the way I grew up and it's it's the, the different environments and cultures I've been exposed to. Um, it kind of gives me my drive. Uh, and it's it's about making that, that change. It's about that impact. You know, I want to see, like, even if I can change the life of one person, it'll all be worth it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure the Army kind of prepared you for that, right? Yeah, yeah, it did. It gave me some good skill sets. The biggest thing it, it taught me was, um, because I was a, an analyst, I was an Intel guy, my job was to know things. And so they teach you how to learn rapidly and become a subject matter expert as fast as possible. So I think that's one of the most valuable skill sets it did give me. That and resiliency, but. Yeah, for anybody who's like, who's watching or here, who, who, haven't, who hasn't stepped into the crypto game, wh how would you, what would you tell them, like, where could they get more information, what, what are good, s good places to read about it, to YouTube understand YouTube University. Uh, YouTube is a fantastic spot. Um, you know, just start with the basics. So look at the technology. So start off, what is blockchain? You know, that's the first thing you need to understand. There's a plethora of information online, but YouTube is a really, really valuable resource uh, when it comes to, uh, to seeking knowledge. Yeah, is that how you taught yourself, the YouTube? No. How did you, uh, no, but how did you kind of like educate yourself on it? Because that's, I mean, as a person who, who sometimes you know reports on it like there's still a lot i don't know you know what i mean and i'm writing about it for others to get educated so i just i'm interested to to know where you kind of your sources yeah uh a lot of it is uh a lot of it is actually youtube now it is to, to refresh our knowledge or learn about new change or new consensus consensus algorithms but it's also like google google is a very powerful tool and then it's not just taking that one article it's actually reading multiple multiple things multiple things and then also breaking it down and looking at the the core principles like uh proof of authority proof of uh proof of coverage and actually looking at it breaking it down to its smallest elements and then trying to understand those each individual elements yeah and you know what, what i got from you is just take the risk i mean you got to move fast in this kind of environment so there's not a lot of time to take the risk and look at it's not just about risk it's about um looking at the different outcomes and what's what's the outcome that you're seeking at that point what's the next milestone and then going towards that milestone um, how you get there you know one thing I'd, I've learned is you have to be able to pivot and to adapt to a situation quickly um, so it's not getting so fixated on the plan because no no well-made plan survives first contact it's being able to adapt that plan and then uh, evolve that plan to where you can actually hit that metric or that milestone and then rinse and repeat yeah I got to wrap, but I have one last question. So are you, are you looking forward to regulation around the crypto? Because, I mean, that's what everybody's waiting for, you know, because right now it's kind of all over the place. Are you looking for those kind of guidelines from the government? I would love guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, tell us, we live in a land of uh, rule of law, but it would be nice to know what the actual guidelines are. It's a pretty loud motorcycle. Yeah, cool. and Bert. <laughs> um, no, it's it's uh, we live in a, a land of rule of law. I just I do hope that the legislators and the uh, the regulators do seek to understand and actually understand what they are regulating and what they're they're doing. Just like they seek to understand traffic laws and what a vehicle can and can't do, they should do the same thing when it comes to blockchain and actually in any industry in general. So, all right, well there you have it, John. I know I went over, but thank you, thank you for thank answering. You.
not all, but most of my questions. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't give financial advice. I don't talk about No, personal. hey, Stop. listen, I like, I got to ask, you know? Yep. No? no. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you.